Hi there and welcome. It's Jennifer and I'm thankful you're here today. So recently I got a couple sets of dies and a stamp set that I just went crazy for and wanted to make a bunch of different projects using them creatively. Instead of just doing this on my own, I thought I'd go ahead and share it in a video in hopes that it inspires you to look at dies and stamps you have and really expand how they're used. You know, this hobby of ours is an investment, so I think it's good to consider the many ways you can use something. So today I am using a gift box die set, a crayon die set, and a stamp set from Concord and Ninth in many different ways. I will also show you how to use these projects for non-crayon like projects at the end of this video. But these crayons really scream to me because as you know, I like making projects for teachers and for kids, but you could use this for others too. So first up, we have the Concord and Ninth Color Me Happy die set. This is a brilliant set. It creates crayons and on the side of the crayons, you can put the messages, thanks, friend, hello, and lovely. There are also the two small heart dies. I'll be using these on all of my projects today, but remember you could use them in a very simple way for simple cards. So as I do when I normally find a die set I like, I go crazy. I go up to the fireplace and I die cut as many as I can, and then I assemble as many as I can and then take them back to my craft room. So I die cut the crayon itself from a bold color of cardstock, and then the wrapper die I die cut from a slightly lighter color of cardstock. For the black details to add to the crayons, I did first put all to new adhesive sheet on the back of the cardstock before die cutting. That way I didn't have to fuss with putting adhesive on these tiny little stripes. Instead, the adhesive would already be on there. So you can see me positioning them in place and then pressing them down. And then we have our fun little crayon. So I made a bunch of these and on some of them I did add the sentiment, which is really cool because it looks like the label on the crayon. So some have the sentiment, some don't, and you'll see it used in different ways in today's video. Making a bunch of layered die cuts is really something I enjoy doing. I find it very calming. So this set was right up my alley and I made lots of them so I could create a bunch of projects too. Now along with this die set, I used another from Concord and Knight that I think is brilliant. It's so well designed. It is the mini gift box die sets. So the two big dies on the left can be used to create a mini gift box, which you'll see, and it also works great for a crayon box. The dies at the top create a really nice bow. I'll show some examples later in this video. Then there's also the enjoy and for you, which can be used on many different things, and some tag dies. So I'll be using this die set for all of my projects and cards today, but I'm going to show you creative ways to use them. Again, keep in mind, I'm just doing crayon boxes in today's video, but these box dies can be used for other projects too, not just crayons. So you could do it in any color or pattern you want. That's something important to keep in mind when you invest in a large die set, the different ways you can use them. So these dies not only cut the shape, but they also have the score lines, so you can easily assemble this. This is about the easiest box assembly die set I've ever used, and I'm thankful for that. I find that if it's too complicated, I won't use it much. This one's easy to use. So I'm just reinforcing all of the score lines that the dies created. And there you see you'll have two halves that will go together very easily. Okay, so to put these two halves together, you need something very strong, a strong adhesive. I'm opting for a double-sided adhesive tape. You could use strong liquid adhesive too. I wouldn't use a tape runner here because you want to make sure this holds very, very well. You're folding over the little flaps on each of the pieces and putting double-sided tape along them. So you can see the flaps are folded over and I'm putting adhesive onto them. And then you will also need one on this little bottom flap here. So there are three small flaps and you're putting adhesive on each of them. At this point, it's pretty easy to see how it goes together when you're doing this in real life, but I'm putting one of those flaps right up against the edge of the other die cut piece, lining it along the edge and along the bottom, and then I'll press that down in place. Okay, now it's time to remove the release paper from the other side flap, and then we can add that over, and this creates the walls of our crayon box. But again, this can be a little gift box. You could make it like out of craft color, cardstock, pattern paper, whatever you want. And then finally, we have that third smaller flap along the bottom. I remove the release paper, tuck it into the bottom of the box, and then press it down. 
Now the completed box has overall dimensions of three inches wide, four and a quarter inches tall, and then about five eighths of an inch thick, so a bit more than half inch thick. Okay, next I thought I'd put some green triangles in the bottom corner just to give it a fun, colorful look and go along with that crayon box feel. Whenever I want to create two triangles of the same size, I first cut a rectangle and then I can cut from one corner to the opposite corner and I end up with two triangles. So one will get glued in the bottom left corner and one will get glued in the bottom right. Now these triangles are super big, I'll cut them down later. I also wanted to add a few green stripes, so while I'm here, I'll cut three or four thin green cardstock strips. This is an excellent way to use up some of your colorful scraps. So now for the rest of the assembly really on this box, I'm using Gina K Connect Liquid Adhesive. This is a very strong adhesive, and by using a liquid adhesive, I can kind of move the pieces around, which you see me doing here, until I get exactly where I want, and then I can be sure it will hold tight. After I glued the two triangles down, I did add those little stripes right along it. Now it's up to you how you decorate this box. You can do whatever you want. You could have even used a pattern paper, a yellow dot pattern paper would have been fun to assemble the box from. Sky is the limit. I do find that I rarely use pattern papers. A lot of people ask about that. I just find it so easy to replenish my cardstock and make it patterned on my own if I do stamping on it, but you will see me use some pattern paper later to make some envelopes. Okay, so now we know how to assemble one of these boxes. You can decorate it however you want. This is going to my friend who is a teacher, and inside of it will have four mini note cards and four mini envelopes that she can write notes on for kids or parents. So let's next make a few quick cards and envelopes to go inside. For the little cards, I started with four mini note cards that I created that are about two and three quarter inches wide and three and three quarter inches tall. I ended up getting a little bit smaller than those sizes. I also have a bunch of my crayons that I assembled earlier. Now instead of gluing each of those crayons down separately onto the note card and getting the spacing just right, I decided to turn all those crayons into one big piece. So I have a scrap of cardstock with adhesive on it and I'm laying all the crayons up against each other, kind of scattered how I want them. Now I can trim off the excess, and now I have this one piece to add to my card however I want. You're gonna see me do that a lot throughout this video, and it makes it a lot easier than dealing with each of the crayons individually. So now I put some strong adhesive on the back of that, I can figure out exactly where I want it on my white note card, and then I can press it down. I ended up making four of these mini cards, all a little bit different, kind of how the crayons are placed on the card. And then I used either a thanks or hello for the label on one of the crayons on each. I plan to make a bunch of these in a traditional card size and give those to teachers also, and also for Lila to do for Valentine's. Now it's time to create the four mini envelopes for those four mini note cards. And I, for this, I used another Concord and Ninth die set. This is the mini post envelope die set. It makes the envelope and there is an envelope liner die, so you can create a fun envelope liner, but I skipped that part. And what's really cool is Concord and Ninth planned it out so that these envelopes, when you assemble them, fit in the gift box that we've already made. Now this is where you'll see me use some pattern paper. Doodlebug pattern paper is one of my favorites because they have a lot of tone on tone and the other side will be tone on tone in the same colors but a different pattern. Their 12 by 12 papers are the ones that I reach for the most whenever I make my own uh, little envelopes or if I do wanna use a pattern paper on a card. Now you can see here, these are so easy to assemble. You just fold along the four score lines then you'll put a little bit of adhesive on the longer flap right along the outside edges. Now you could do with this double-sided pattern paper an envelope where the polka dots are on the inside or the outside. At first I thought I was gonna do the polka dots on the outside, but I decided to do the stripes on the outside instead. So there we'll just put that adhesive there and press it down and there we have our mini envelope. And the mini note cards that we created earlier fit perfect inside. The overall size of this envelope when closed is two and three quarters by four inches. Okay, so now to finish off our project, I die cut a large red heart, and then I'm just putting adhesive on the bottom of the heart. That way it's glued only to the bottom portion of our box, and the big yellow flap that's rounded up there will tuck underneath it. 
I also die cut for you from black cardstock and added that on top. Okay, let's take a look at the completed project once that's dry. That flap pulls right out from behind the heart and inside we have our four mini note cards and our four envelopes. Here you can see how I made each of the mini note cards a little bit different, just to have some fun, but I did use hello and thanks on each of them. And here you can see the four mini envelopes that I made from the Doodlebug cardstock. You've probably heard me mention in the past that I like doing note card sets as gifts for people. I feel like it's a great way to get more out of the products I use. I can use them for cards, I can you know, mail those to friends, but if I make a set of note cards, I'm really using them a lot and then they can pass that kindness on. So anyways, I think this is a, a fun little project to assemble. But next I'll show you other ways to use this gift box creatively. Okay, in this example, I decided to do some stamping on the front and keep it very simple. When you open it up, there is a rainbow crayon card and also a little gift. I had bought this necklace and earring set. It's actually rainbow. It's hard to tell. I had bought that on sale over the holidays and I wanted to give it to a friend and I thought this was the perfect opportunity. So on this one, I'm using the Concord and Ninth Color Me Happy stamp set. This goes along with the crayon set. Notice there are stamps for creating a drawn crayon line. You can see those on the right of the stamp set. So you could use those along with the die cuts. I didn't actually use those today, but I'll be using the sentiments in the set. I also used the Concord and Ninth Buds in Blossom stamp set. I really like that hello friend there in the middle. And I just stamped the word friend alone on the front of this gift box I'm about to create. I do like all the flowers in this set too, and I hope to use it in a video soon. So I've cut the two pieces needed for a gift box, both from yellow cardstock again, and I'm stamping the sentiments on it before I assemble it. Any stamping you wanna do, either sentiments or background or whatever, you want to do before you assemble. It makes it so much easier. I stamped friend on the base of the box, and then on the large circular flap on the top, I stamped color me thankful. The fun thing is with that stamp set, you could do color me excited, color me thankful, color me happy, a lot of different ways you can use it. Okay, so now I'm going to assemble this just as I did before. I'll skip through this because it's the same process of assembling the box. I also added a little red heart to the place where you tuck the top flap in. I just thought that was a nice pop of color. Now we can make the card to go in the inside. I'm doing that same trick as I did before where I glued my rainbow of crayons together onto one scrap just so I could deal with it as one piece instead of individuals. I just find that so much easier to do. I then created a small white mini note card that fit into my crayon box and I'm gluing my set of crayons right on top of it so that the tips of the crayons stick out past the top folded edge of that mini note card. Sorry my head gets in the way there. I just wanted it to look like just the crayons were in the box until the person pulled it out. Okay, so then I have my necklace. So I'll link to where I got this necklace from. It's actually a rainbow of stones that says love. I got it like half off before Christmas and I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with it. I just thought it was cute and I wanted to give it as a gift. So what I decided to do is take it out of the large gift box it came in and trim all this down so it fits inside of the little crayon box that I made. So think about the different small gifts that you can give somebody and put inside of a gift box like this. So this gift box will be going to a crafty friend who provides a lot of encouragement. I thought she'd like this. So the card I ended up putting you bring on the outside and so much color to my world on the inside. By the way, if you wanted to give a gift card to someone, this gift box is just the right size for that. You can put it inside your little mini card or just right inside the box. Okay, so back to the project. I also have my little earring set in there. Fits in just fine. So with this, you could put any kind of little gift in there, non-crafty related. But I had an idea. If you wanted to give a crafty gift for someone, you could put a small stamp set and an ink cube or two inside this box. For example, this Concord and Ninth Lots to Say stamp set, I'm gonna buy another one of these, a new one, and I'm gonna give that in a gift box, just like this. It'll have the stamp set and also a couple Concord and Ninth ink cubes. I think that would be a fun, fun set to give, but you can see my set's been used way too much to give as a gift. But that's another way you can include a gift inside of a gift box like this. 
Okay, so far we've used that gift box die set to create two gift box, but I want to use it to create cards too, because that's what I make most. So the first example I have for a card is to create this pop-up card that actually fits in an envelope just fine. Let's look at the completed project first so you can understand what we're making. It flattens in the envelope, then pops up when you take it out and it'll stand up on its own. That little cram box will hold a little card that you can take out and write whatever message you want on the inside. So I'm using the gift box to make a dimensional card, I guess you would say, that pops up when you take it out of the envelope. Now in this case, I cut the two pieces of the gift box, but I'm cutting off the tops of it and the bottoms of it. So we're just using the pieces that wrap around, not the flaps at the top and the bottom. So you'll see I'm cutting those off and I'm just following the score lines the die makes, so it's really easy to figure out where to cut. We just want to create, again, the walls, not the top and the bottom of the box. But before we put these two pieces together with adhesive, I need to do one thing. See that scrap over there, the rounded uh, yellow piece that we cut from the top of the box? I'm gonna use that as a stopper in the inside bottom of our box. Just bear with me, it'll make sense in a moment. I'm folding along the score line there, and I'm taking double-sided adhesive and putting it right along the flap. I then am going to trim the width of this just a little bit. I'm gonna use my scissors, nothing fancy, no one's gonna see it. Cut a little bit off one side and a little bit off the other, just so it's a little more narrow. I now am gluing that right along the bottom back. So lining it up with that back edge there. And now I have this big flap here. I know that seems weird, but bear with me, you'll see why in a bit. Now we can adhere the walls together. So I put adhesive along this little flap and then line the flap up with the edge of this other piece. This is just like we did before, except we cut off the top and the bottom of the box. So now uh, adhesive on this flap and then wrap that around and close it. And now we have a box that doesn't have a top or bottom to it, but there's that flap inside, which will be there to prevent our card from falling out the bottom when we put our card in there. And notice this collapse is very easy so you can put it into an envelope. Okay, so here I have a rainbow of crayons that I glued together on a piece of cardstock, as you've seen me do many times. And this time I decided to add another row of crayons. So I created some crayons that are a little bit lighter than the others, and I'm just gluing them staggered on top. I then took that entire piece and I'm gluing it onto a mini note card, it's top folded, that fits inside of that little shadow box or collapsing box that we've created. I'm leaving some room on the bottom for a sentiment and I have the crayon sticking up past the folded line at the top just so you don't see it. That way when it's inside of the yellow box, you don't see the white card. Okay, so off screen I did some stamping. I stamped thank you on the bottom of our crayon note card. I die cut a black heart and white heat embossed color me happy on it, and I'm gluing that right to the front. So what we've created here is a collapsible box that holds a note card, and this will go into a regular envelope with no problem. Now remember that flap I put in the inside, that extra yellow piece glued in there? That creates a pocket for this card to slide in and not slide out the bottom of our collapsible box. Because remember we cut the bottom of the box off? So it's in there and it won't fall out the bottom. So here's the completed card. It collapses fine to go inside of an envelope, a regular A2 envelope. It stands on its own and it's got this note card that comes out and you can write whatever message you want on the inside and even put a gift card in there. Now if you look at the box from the bottom, you'll see that flap in there. See the flap? There's the flap in there. And the card just slides right into it and it keeps it from falling out the bottom. Nobody will ever see it. It collapses just fine to put it into a regular envelope and send in the mail. Now I made this card a crayon box that pops up when you take it out of the envelope, but you could use the same die set to maybe make a box of flowers that come out, like a note card covered with flowers that you pull out. You could use it for many things, not just the crayons. It's all about looking at the products you have and thinking of how you can use them creatively. Okay, my next card idea using the gift box is actually a pull tab card, which makes the crayons come up and out. So here's a look at the completed card. It's a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. 
And when you pull the tab at the top, the crayons come up and reveal the rest of the message. Now you could do this with things besides crayons, like I said, a box of flowers or whatever. It worked really well with these crayons though. So this one I can give to just about anyone. I also show how to create this pull tab feature without any additional specialty dies. And I will link to a video here in the top right that shows other card ideas for pull tabs that don't require specialty dies too. Now for this card, I'm only using parts of the gift box again. And this time it's just the front of the gift box and the back. We're not using any of the tabs or sides. So I am cutting this rectangle right from the front of our gift box. So I've cut up all the tabs, just cut right along the score lines. And I'll do the same with this piece too. So this will look like a crayon box, but it won't have the dimensions on the side. So think about it, any uh, die sets that you have meant for dimension, you can also cut them down to be something flat for the front of a card. Now while I have some craft cardstock here, I'm cutting several very thin strips of cardstock. Now a lot of times when we form walls for slider cards or shaker boxes, we use foam tape. But I find that I get better results if I stack scraps of cardstock or strips of cardstock. So I'm cutting a bunch of thin craft cardstock strips. It's inexpensive, usually would go to waste, and we're using them to form the walls. So on the back of the die cut piece here, that's the front of our crayon box, I'm layering up five thin strips of craft cardstock right up against the edge. Again, the reason I'm using the cardstock is it's strong, it's cheaper than using foam tape, and from the side, it'll be brown, not white like most foam tape. So we're just building a barrier along the bottom there. Once I'm done with that and trim off the excess, I'm going to do the same along the two sides here, the side here and then along the top two. Again, this is just five cardstock strips thick. This is a wonderful opportunity to use up scraps and make a really secure walls for the pull-up feature that we'll be doing. So I continue to do this so I have the walls on the three sides of this craft piece. So this is the little panel that will slide up and down. Notice it fits between the walls nicely, thanks to how Concord and Ninth arranged it for five crayons to fit in there. Now I need to put a stopper below this so it doesn't sink into the box, but sticks out just like this. I'm holding it where I want the bottom position to be of the crayons and putting a pencil mark right here. That means I need a stopper there so the crayons don't go in too far. Now I have some little cardstock scraps left over, little strips from the walls we created. So I'm just building a few up here. So I put five little strips right here and that will be the stopper for our crayons which you'll understand in just a moment as you see the rest come together. I have a white panel here that is four by five and a quarter. I'm placing my crayon box there and I'll just put the crayons inside so I can get the pos positioning right, putting it right in the center. I need to cut a slit in the back of that panel behind the crayon box, about an inch from the down from the top of our crayon box. And we want to make sure that slit isn't too wide to stick out the crayon box. So I'm putting little dots on the side. I'll now use my ruler to make a straight line with my pencil. You really don't have to do the pencil part. I'm doing that just so that you can see in the video, even though it ends up being hard to see anyways, but there is a pencil line there. Now there are a few ways that you can create a slit in this cardstock piece. You could use a trimmer. You could use like a slot die that many die sets have. I'm just cutting it with my craft knife. It doesn't matter if it's straight because it will be hidden. Nobody will ever see. I'm actually cutting two lines very close to each other and popping that out. So I have a slit here, just narrow. You can make it wider if you want to. It doesn't matter again, no one will see. Okay, now there's one more thing we need to do and that is to create the pull tab feature. For this, I have a piece of white cardstock that's way too long, but that's okay. And I'm cutting it about two and a quarter inches wide. You just want it to be more narrow than the crayons that we've assembled. I'm also creating a score line about a half inch from the end. This little flap will keep the pull tab from flying out of our card when the person pulls it. Now there is one more thing that I did that you could skip if you want to. I cut a small piece of craft cardstock to go as the back of the box. 
So I'm gluing it along the two raised areas on the edge of our box. So a little bit of adhesive on one raised area, a little bit of adhesive on the other raised area, and I'm gluing it there at the top. This is completely aesthetic, just so that when you look at the crayons from the front of the card, you see that brown back of the box. But again, you could totally skip it. Okay, let's assemble everything. Onto the little flap on our giant pull tab here, I'm putting some strong adhesive. You wanna make sure that this is strong so that it doesn't come apart when the person pulls it. So I'm using double-sided adhesive. I'm putting that adhesive flap right up against the bottom of our crayon piece here right against the bottom. This is the pull tab that will pull those crayons up and down inside of our card. So you can see it's kind of hanging there. It looks silly at this point. Now I'll slide the crayons into the box. So I'm just gonna tuck them under that backing piece that we just added. So it slides right in there. And we can put it right up against the little stopper in there too. Remember how we put a stopper? And it's right up against it. So it'll slide up and down, no problem. All right, now we need to just adhere this onto that white panel with the slit. So I am putting adhesive just along the raised areas of this craft piece, all those little uh, slivers of cardstock that we added. Again, you could have used foam tape here, but you would really need very narrow foam tape, and this is much more secure. All right, here it is. You're gonna take that long pull tab, tuck it through the slit on our panel, and then lay everything down. The adhesive's on there, remember? Center it up and press it down. And now we have our card assembled, or at least the front panel to our card assembled. Now you wanna give that a little bit of time to dry and then you can test out that pull tab feature or you could do it right away, cause I'm impatient. But you wanna make sure you don't allow that to move until it's dry. Okay, so next I wanted to trim down the pull tab. It's way too long as you see. So I press it in all the way to the closed position and cut off the excess. I like making the pull tab feature very long so I can trim it down to whatever I need. It's better to have too long than too short. I also rounded the corners of the pull tab for a nice finished look. Okay, so now we can adhere this to a note card. I'm putting adhesive around the pull tab, not close to it, not on it, but around it. A lot of liquid adhesive works great for this. And then I put it onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding black note card. Okay, so now let's look at the completed card. I added a black die cut heart and a red one and white heat embossed you bring on it. Now, when you pull the pull tab, it says color to my world. So it's the rest of the sentiment. The pull sentiment is from a My Favorite Things stamp set, but you could also write pull on that if you prefer. I did put a white cardstock piece in the inside since it's a black note card. So I had a place to write a personal message. So you could do this pull tab feature with a little flat gift box that I made with anything pulling out. I did a crayon box with crayons, but you could make it look like anything is pulling out of that. Before I go, I wanted to share some more ideas that I didn't get a chance to share in this video. I did a lot of crayon theme because I love that. It's bright and it's cheerful, but you can use this for anything you want. Remember there are the dies to make a bow in this set. So I asked Concord and Ninth if I could show some of their examples that they did with this same gift box set, and they said I could. So this image is from the Concord and Ninth website. I like how they use the gift box to hold little chocolate bars. You see the chocolate bars at the top? They even stamped wrappers to go on them. But my favorite from this is that clear box on the top left. They use the box die set, and then the bow dies that are included to make that big pink bow and they die cut in joy from gold cardstock and have that hanging from it like a tag. I just get really excited when I see companies design products to go together so well so that you can use your products more. And by the way, they even did a stamp set that's perfect for stamping on the gift box. You can see the greetings that are arched like the flap on the box and little sentiments and stripes. That's what this stamp set is. I didn't use it today, but it goes great on it. And they used it in the Concord and Ninth examples I showed you. Now, if you're like me and you like assembling die cuts, there's another die cut set that I encourage you to check out. It's the Weekender Bag die set from Concord and Ninth. I may do a video on this. I'm not sure um, if it's something that folks would wanna see, but I think it's so fun too, because you can create little purses using your cardstock and pattern papers, a lot of your scraps too. And inside this little purse, you can put a little card or you can put a little gift. 
So if you're with somebody who likes creating those paper crafts that are dimensional, be sure to check that out. And again, this example is from Concord and Ninth. I just wanted to share with you some of the fun products on my desk and things I'm excited to use too. After all, this hobby is about doing what you enjoy most. And for me, I love assembling those die cuts. All right, if you are interested in the products I talked about, they're linked in my YouTube description below. You can also go to my blog, which I'll link at the end here at the top right, where I'll have photos of everything and much more information. In the middle are a couple other related videos. I thank you for creating with me today, and I hope to see you soon for another video.